Hey guys, here we go into a video on Mikey Garcia. And what I want to show in this video is that while Mikey Garcia has gotten a little better, he's gotten more technical, he's gotten more experience, um, Mikey Garcia is the same fighter that he was when he fought Juan Manuel Lopez. And uh, he fights the exact same way. And there's a problem with that. Um, and that's that he's going to fight Errol Spence the same way too. And that's what I want to talk about, is in my previous videos, there were a lot of people who were big fans of Mikey Garcia saying that I'm not giving Mikey Garcia credit for his skills, I'm biased, I'm this, I'm that, you know. <clears throat> I I picked Kovalev to win um, and beat Alvarez in the first fight by knockout. I thought he was going to smash him. Smash him. Easy peasy. And... Um, I thought he was. I thought he was winning the fight, and then boom, he gets knocked down. He gets knocked out. You know, shit, man. I better close my channel real quick. Um, but um, in the second fight, I didn't flip flop and say, "Oh man, Eladio Alvarez, he's so good." Oh, you know, go with the flow. Oh, Kovalev's done. This isn't that. No, I understand that skills pay the bills, and Kovalev smashed him in exactly the same fashion that I predicted in the first fight. And that's because I let the skills talk. Right, or let the what the fighter is good at talk, not not what I think. Right, it's not about it's how I analyze, it's how I how I obsess about boxing, the way that all the little variables that I see that I feel when I watch film study. You know, like you, like you guys watching my film study. These are small amounts of the amount of film that I watched on these fights that I'm sharing with you. There are other things that I'm interested in too in the fights that I think is fascinating, but. For the most part, I'm trying to, in my mind, compile a way that I feel the fight is going to go. And and because of that, I feel like all of the cards are in Errol Spence's court. Only Errol Spence can let himself down. Just like Kovalev let himself down in the first fight against Aledir Alvarez. Um, and a lot of people said that I was biased picking Kovalev. And then in the rematch came, none of those people came back to my channel. Anyway, we're going to talk about Mikey Garcia... And the way that he fights southpaws, and the reason this is important is because he fights them the exact same way. And because of the fact that he fights them in the exact same way, and I've shown in my videos countless, countless, countless times, that fighters have tendencies, fighters have patterns, fighters learn how to do things, and that's what makes them great. That's what makes them separate from the pack in the first place. But when those, those skills don't line up against what another fighter is doing well, that means that they're going to fall behind in the fight, right? And the idea here is that Mikey Garcia's main sources of offense are timing and trap setting. The trap setting, you can't take anything away from him, right? Uh, he might be able to catch Spence with that, but we'll talk about that later. But he fights the exact same way. Now, as you notice, Juan Manuel Lopez is going to be coming forward. He's going to be stepping on his front foot. And as he does, Mikey Garcia looks to continue. And Juan Manuel Lopez picks up on it in the first round. He's like, oh, he's touching gloves with me, touching gloves with me. And then, boom, catches him with the right hand, right, or straight left hand, right away. <clears throat> That's not what I want to focus on, but what I want to focus on is the timing, right? Now watch as Juan Manuel Lopez steps forward. He's going to step forward with that jab, and he steps forward, and he doesn't punch. Boom, and Mikey Garcia times him on that front foot. Because Juan Manuel Lopez, when he steps with his shot, he steps hard, you know he's punching. And when you when he doesn't step hard, you know he's not going to punch. Um, and he kind of telegraphs it himself. And as you can see, Mikey Garcia waits for him to rock forward and starts to attack him with that right hand. But Mikey Garcia never lets his right hand go off of any other timing. Never, ever, ever. He just doesn't do it. Um, and that makes him a limited fighter in that respect. He does have good timing. But what happens when your opponent can adjust to that timing? Now just keep watching these clips um, and watch as Mikey Garcia only throws punches at Juan Manuel Lopez when he's rocking forward. Look at how he rocks forward right there. He tries to catch him with a 1-2. Lopez almost counters him with the right hand, right? That's not important. The counter is not important. That's not what I want to talk about. But the timing, it's, see, as Juan Manuel Lopez bounces forward, right? Bounce forward, bounce back, and as he's bouncing forward again, boom, Mikey puts him down, right? But Mikey Garcia does not let his right hand go unless he has a timing on you, unless he's going to get you to walk into it. Uh, now, as you can see, He's going to start the fight with Dejan as a teaching in exactly the same way. Controlling the lead hand, circling to his left, right? Away from the quote-unquote power hand, um, and controlling the lead hand. You know, and as you saw, you know, um, it's the same exact fight. 
right? The same exact fight. He has the same flaws, right? Here's one where Zlatichinen can easily just sneak in that body shot, and that's something that's going to be very, very important for Spence. I think he's going to have a good time with it. But Mikey Garcia fighting the exact same fight. Just watch these two fights side by side, and you're just like, oh, that's Mikey Garcia. You, you know who he is. You know what he's doing. And that's going to be a huge problem for him. And as you see, does not let his hand go in the first 30 seconds of the fight. Steps forward, steps forward, one, two. He never lets his right hand go unless he's got that timing on you. Um, or he's setting a trap. I think he's about to set a trap right here. Oh, no. That's a different clip. But this right here, this is a problem too, right? Mikey Garcia coming forward or Zlatichinen coming forward, pressuring him, being controlled. And look at how out of position he wounds up being against uh, Zlatichinen, right? And we're going to see a little bit more of that in the next fight or in the next clips. But it's only fighting on this timing, only letting his right hand go on this timing, right? When Latichinin steps forward, right? Watch Latichinin's front foot. Steps forward, one, two, comes. One, two. Steps forward, steps forward. And look at how he's able to still land shots, though. Latichinin is still able to come in and get under those that controlling hand, right? Because Mikey Garcia is only looking to control the space he's not looking to use that space to do anything he's not looking to break your layers up right and uh, another one of the comments that i got was that um i talk about how mikey garcia doesn't know what to do with the control that he has over his opponent look at his opponent what is he doing he just straight up throws a left hand to the body no setup no nothing all he's doing is timing mikey garcia on that timing touch but Mikey Garcia should be paying attention to the fact that his opponent is about to throw a straight left hand and counter him. That's what he should be doing. But he's not. He's only looking to time his opponent and get his opponent to slow down enough to get him to fight on his rhythm, right? And if you notice that about Mikey Garcia's fights as well, he, he's a rhythm fighter. And that is also going to be a huge problem for him, you guys. Errol Spence throws his combinations like lightning fast weight transitions. But Mikey Garcia goes one, two right? And you'll see it. I'll show it to you in the next clip too. But one, two, right there. One, two, one, two. And again, only letting those right hands go off of the timing steps. Look as the teaching and jump forward, jumps forward. One, two, right? Steps forward. One, two, steps forward. One, two, step, step, step. And then boom, this is one of the biggest problems that Mikey Garcia is going to be facing is that he gets comfortable in that timing. You know, just like in this in this Wanma clips right here, Wanma still doesn't have that much trouble finding Mikey Garcia, even though he gets smashed in this fight. He gets this is like one of the most knocked out I've ever seen anybody. Like he looked like he was drunk fighting this fight. Everything that Mikey Garcia touched him with just made him loopy. But look at how after even after he's getting hit, Wanma Juan Lopez is able to get to the body. Boom, land a straight left hand right there. Again, land a straight left hand to the body, and it's all on the same timing that Mikey is setting up. Boom. Look at how Mikey Garcia, he's still there. Even after he lands a shot, he's still there to be hit, you know? And this is exactly what I was talking about when I used the Lipinets fight. Um, he's there to be hit after he throws his combinations. He doesn't move off the line too well. He's just not ready to fight. He thinks... The way that Mikey Garcia analyzes a fight is each engagement is a separate is a separate encounter. And that's how you want to think about it. But you, you have to understand when the encounter is over. And Mikey Garcia thinks that just because he hit his opponent that the, the encounter is over. That, that they're going to stop in their tracks. They're going to be like, oh, I gotta, I'm, I'm playing chess right now. Right? And, and Errol Spence plays Chinese checkers. You know? Just because you got you you didn't you didn't take his piece just because you hit him you know you can get to the other side right this is a stupid analogy but the fight the engagement doesn't end just because you hit your opponent and that's something that Mikey Garcia has a very difficult time understanding and training now this this clip in particular flash the right hand gets under the hook and then goes to the body boom and look at Mikey Garcia try to tie up. Look at how sloppy he is on the inside. Look at this, you guys. Come on. You want to talk about bias? You want to talk about um, being an elite fighter? Have you ever seen Lomachenko put his head down like this? Ever? Right? Floyd Mayweather? Come on, you guys. Even Manny Pacquiao. I mean, maybe Manny Pacquiao, right? But he got that offense, though. He ain't. He's not a defensive fighter. 
But um, but again, look at even though he's he's landing this counter, he's he lands this shot, boom, and then he's just like rocks forward, the slowest rock forward. This Wanwa has two left feet in this fight. Actually, I think he's got two left feet and two right feet, and they're all going the wrong direction. And Wanwa Lopez is able to eat these shots and just land punches, just come forward. And Mikey Garcia is there to be hit. Now, this is a continuous sequence right here. Look at how he eats that shot, and he's just able to counter him. Come, Keep coming forward. Come forward again. And again, look at how sloppy Mikey Garcia is getting off the ropes, right? No control over his opponent. I think he's going to be a little bit better at this in the Errol Spence fight. I think that he has shored a little bit of this up. But look at how sloppy he is. Look at how easy he is to hit. And these are the kinds of things that I think he's going to have a problem with. Again... You know, look at how easy it is for him in that sequence to land those body shots because Mikey Garcia doesn't know how to counter punch. Mikey Garcia, he doesn't know how to utilize the control of the space that he has. And he has control. He has perfect control. He's constantly making Juan Manuel Lopez react to what he's doing right here. Like after he shoots that jab, he has control of him, right? He could do anything right here. Juan Manuel Lopez is committing. He's taking a step. He's committing all his weight. He has nowhere to go. He cannot do anything. And if Mikey Garcia caught him with an uppercut or caught him with a right hand or caught him with a left hook or caught him with anything, he knows where Juan Manuel Lopez is going to be, but he doesn't understand uh, that he needs to be looking for that. And that's going to be a huge problem for him in the Errol Spence fight because he's not fighting a 126-pound fighter anymore. He's fighting, you know, even though Errol Spence said he's going to weigh 160 on fight night, He's, he's going to be like 180. You know, he's going to be a big dude. You know, probably 170, you know. But um, the next thing I want to talk about is this knockout. This knockout is exactly the same. Now, again, watch the Dejan Zatichin in fight and then the, the one on Lopez fight. Watch them side by side, right? Watch one round of each of them and tell me that it's not the exact same game plan. It's not the exact same fight. Um... And now Mikey Garcia setting that trap, shoots that shot. He knows that um, that Juan Manuel Lopez is going to counter him, right? And he lands a great right hand to the body. It's a beautiful trap, right? Shoots it, takes a step back to draw his opponent in, and lands a great right hand. This is exactly what he's been working on on the mitts. Exactly. I showed you guys in that breakdown video. He shoots the jab, takes a step back, comes in with the right hand, and then just boom. Look at the way that Mikey Garcia throws his combinations, though, right? All his weight in this shot. All his weight in this shot. Like, it's committed, 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 committed. You know, there's a timing to it. A boom, boom, boom. Like he's hitting a heavy bag. And Errol Spence just doesn't throw his punches that slow. Now, this is exactly the same thing that he does to Zlatichinin. He takes that shot to the right and lands that right hand. It's exactly the same trap. Uh, it's a little more refined. He throws an uppercut instead of a straight right hand. But he's looking to do the exact same thing. And that's going to be a big problem for Mikey Garcia because of the fact that it's predictable. And um, Mikey Garcia, it looks like he has only one way to fight a southpaw. And I don't think he knows any other way to do it. And I don't think that Errol Spence is the kind of fighter that you want to be in the ring with when you're learning how to fight a southpaw. And all the skills and all the tricks that Mikey Garcia has, I don't think that they're tricks and things that, that Errol Spence hasn't seen. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, and uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And my YouTube manager is telling me to tell you guys to hit the bell icon, but tell you guys in a better way than just telling you to hit it. Um, so hit it, um, but better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before you hit the bell... Make sure that you, you're you fainting. Control the space, right? Don't let the bell know you're coming, okay? Um, and then make sure that you set the shot up and then and that you really knock it out, okay? All right, thanks, guys.